So I've had my RTX 4090 for a couple of months and it's performing great, but it's getting a little hot. So let's tear it apart and fix that today. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here and today, yes, we will be repasting my RTX 4090. I actually originally said when I first purchased my 4090 that I probably wasn't going to repaste it because the GPU was running really cold. I was like, wow, good job, Gigabyte. But now it's running a little hot. So before when I first got this card and the thermal paste was fresh from the factory, it was running about max of 60, 65, 60-ish degrees at 550 watts. Now it is running at over 70 degrees at lower wattage. That is significantly worse. That means that in games, even when you're not pulling as much power, it is getting a little bit hotter and that is causing the GPU frequencies to downclock, meaning slightly less performance. Really, this isn't a major issue, but I do enjoy just always having the highest frequencies on my PC. I know what you're thinking, Chamber, why don't you just increase the fan speeds? Believe it or not, I enjoy having fast hardware, but I also enjoy having really quiet PCs. That is something that I really enjoy. I am running the silent BIOS on my 4090 so that at times the fans just shut off. Fans aren't as loud because I don't enjoy hearing noise, especially while gaming. I'm using open back headphones. But before we actually get into repacing the graphics card, we're going to start off by testing the graphics card right now itself using TimeSpy Extreme. So let's get right to testing with TimeSpy. Here we are on the gaming PC. Now, as you can see, I have set a static fan speed of 70%. I don't want anything to be affected. I want a constant fan speed. My case fans are about a thousand ish RPM. I did max out the power limit and the temperature limit. The memory clock is at plus 1750 stable and I unlocked the core voltage and I did also lock the core just to keep that frequency the same. It's at 3045 megahertz at 1.1 volts. So we're now going to run the TimeSpy Extreme stress test. This is 20 loops of TimeSpy Extreme graphics test one and two. We're going to see what kind of temperatures we're getting. We're going to be logging with GPU-Z as well, as well as looking at it through MSI Afterburner. But let's get right into the pre-testing. Okay, we're currently on loop four, but I actually am going to stop it here. As you can see, the GPU is hitting 83 degrees right now, 2835, 2970, okay. Now it's boosting back up, but as you can see, it is severely downclocking, even to the point where it's having to drop the voltage because of the temperatures. If we look here at um, GPU Z, one thing I also wanna look at is the temperature of the memory let's see if it is here if not we might need to look at okay we need to pull up hardware info oh while we're at it let's look at a hotspot as you can see hotspot is hitting 100 degrees that is very hot that's something we don't want to see and looking here at hardware info we can see that the memory junction is at 82 so that's actually that's actually really good that is a lot better than the gpu temp you want to keep um obviously all of these temperatures as low as possible but memory junction, definitely you want to keep lower just because memory can die if it's really hot, but typically it's not even this hot. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take the 4090 out and then we're going to go through tearing it apart. Here is the RTX 4090 it is out of the PC now. Look, here you go. And in case anyone is wondering, as you know, may or may not know, you can check out the video. I'll leave a link to it right now. But I did pull over a, I did pull almost a thousand watts out of this. And look, my power connector is perfectly fine. I am also using the Corsair cable, by the way, in case anyone is interested. I did upgrade to that a little bit ago. It's working perfectly fine. But to get into this graphics card, it seems like all that is needed to be done is just unscrew the all the screws around the backplate and then the four on the GPU itself. Seems like that's all you're going to need to do. So I'm going to start off by under, unscrewing the um, backplate screws itself, not the ones directly around the GPU, the big ones, just because you do want to make sure that you don't deal with it. While you're at it, make sure you organize your screws. I know a lot of people say that. Do it. Really does help when putting things back together. I just use my little iFixit tray. All right, so all of these screws for the backplate that I can get to so far are removed. All that is left now is the ones around the GPU core itself. These are the ones that really are retaining it. So you just want to start off by unscrewing them. I like to do kind of an X pattern, making sure not to like just have one side have all the pressure. 
slowly. Okay, so I did unscrew that one, unscrew this one, and the last one to get at the start screwing is the one with the warranty void sticker. Keep the bite. This is illegal in the U.S. I don't know why you do it. Like, there's no point in doing that. So now all the screws are out. Let's just take them, put them here so that I don't lose them. And, yep, okay. Now let's make sure that there are no screws left. Okay, there actually was one. Good. It's a good thing just to always double check because you don't want to reef on it. And then, oh, look, you have an extra screw. You forgot to remove. So what we are going to also need to do is make sure that we unplug these fan connectors slash RGB. Looks like there might be two, maybe three connectors. So we want to be careful with those. The two big ones I can tell right here are the fan connectors. So let me actually try and remove those now. Just before you have to be like, oh. Before it gets kind of a mess. This can make it a little bit easier. Making sure I don't reef on the cables. Okay, yeah, we're going to need to take the GPU, the card apart. And here we go. Here's the RTX 4090. Okay, so when removing this card, first of all, let me just make sure that I, oh, I'm going to keep it a little like this right now. This is how I got mine taken apart. Made sure the screws were taken apart like they were. I grabbed it from the 12 pin here and I just kind of pulled it a little bit. That is how I got the card removed. Now, let's just make sure all these are fine. Yeah, all these thermal pads are fine, to be honest. I could get new ones. I don't have new ones. So, sorry. Now I'm just going to remove these fan connectors, making sure that you are careful with these. I'm probably not going to replug the RGB one because honestly, I don't like having the lights and my um, RAM that has no heat spreaders is already bad enough. So let me get these removed. The RGB and fan connectors are removed. Now here is the PCB. PCB is to here. This is the extra part for like the blow through part of the card. PCB is actually very, very small. And here's that paste spread. Now, one thing that I do not like about this is actually this area here that seems really bare and it seems really bare here on the copper itself. So you can see that I used a machine to apply the paste and it seems like there wasn't a lot there, which probably is causing that high hot spot and some of the higher temperatures as well. One thing I've also noticed, there's a QR code here. That is your uh, serial number. So I guess that's how they check serial numbers, maybe. I don't know. It, there's like multiple of them. Multiple QR codes. Interesting. Now, I'm going to clean off this thermal paste using isopropyl alcohol. And then we are going to apply the KPX. Now to apply the KPX, I'll leave a link down below in the description, affiliate link, so you can support me for the KPX. Now, all, I like to always personally manually spread it just to make sure it is always getting the right amount. So here is what you do. Take off the top. So that's obviously first step. Then you just want to squeeze some out. Now, I like to start at one corner and then go all the way to one side and then start spreading it out. So here you go. It's a good little bit of thermal paste. Now I'm just going to put the cap back on. I will probably have to add more. Now you just go out and manually spread it until it's fully covering all parts of the die. It's not conductive as most thermal pastes are this and today, unless it's like liquid metal. So if it does get over the sides, don't worry about it. But actually, this might be enough. Oh, maybe a little bit more. But look, that is actually a really good spread. Wow, good job. Obviously, maybe if you don't get like a full bit of a little corner, it will spread out a little bit when you can, when you screw it in, but you want to get as much covered as possible just to make it a little easier. And so you don't have to worry about if you have good thermal paste contact. Let me finish spreading this. And there we go. Look at that. That actually looks really good. See, yep, it is perfectly covering the die. That's what we want. Now it's time to screw it in to the cooler itself. I'm going to flip it the other way. So this is on the bottom. Screw in, plug in the new the fan connectors, not the RGB one. I'm not going to plug that one in. Now it is all back together. I just kind of had to move the RGB cable that I unscrewed out. If I didn't unscrew the RGB cable, probably would have been easier, but who cares? Now let's actually get to screwing 
back in the cooler. You want to start in the opposite way that you unscrewed it. So we're going to start with the GPU core itself, making sure that we get those nice and tight because those are the most important. Don't go all the way fully tightened instantly on one of these. Not a good idea. So just add a little bit more attention to each side. The last one you can obviously fully screw in. But now let's just screw this one. All right. And now, boom. Now we have the last one, which we're going to screw all the way in. Also, make sure you don't over tighten them and then you like strip your screws. That is a very bad time, especially on something like this. Because you will no longer might have a warranty. All right, now let's increase the screw tension. Yeah, you want to make sure that they're tight. And this is this is really what helps the temperatures the most. Like, no wonder some of these cards have really low temperatures out of the box. Just because that contact is so good. Now we're going to go through screwing all these extra screws in for the backplate. And boom, 4090 Gaming OC is all back in. Just need to tuck in this cable so it doesn't get hit when controlling it. It's the RGB cable. I don't want to install the software. And I wanted to disable the RGB, so there you go. Perfect. But now, it's all perfect. Let's put it back in the rig and test it. Back into Windows, and as you guys can see, these are the exact same settings we were running before. The 3045 megahertz lock curve. But now we are just going to run Time Spy Extreme again, and then we'll get back. We are nine loops now into Time Spy Extreme. I'm going to keep this running just so while I'm talking. But as you can see, okay, memory hotspot is slightly higher than it was before. But this could be either just because the thermal pads were reused or because the test has been running for longer and the memory is now heating up. GPU temperature is actually about the same. Hotspot is five degrees lower, which is much better. That delta is so much better now than what it was before. So that's a good thing. You always want to see that. Fan speed 70%. Clock speed also is not dropping down as much. As you can see, we're still at 1.1, 1.095 volts. Before, we are dropping to like 1.05 volts. So we were dropping voltage a lot. And that's something we didn't want. Um, so was this a success? Yes, 100%. Definitely, if you have a 4090 and you're overclocking, you're having trouble getting good temps without boosting your fans would recommend this. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button down below, subscribe, leave a link down below and tell me what kind of graphics card you have. And if you have a 4090, have you repasted it yet? Or are you just like, nah, it's not really worth it for me. Temps are fine now, or I'll just boost my fans up. But hope you guys have enjoyed. Join the discord if you haven't already. See you guys later. Peace.